Hey guys, it's Anthony, helping you make more money and live on less. And in this video, I'm going to be breaking down how to add a credit card as well as a bank account to your Mint app or desktop version. If you watched my last couple videos on Mint, you saw where I struggled setting up the budget a little bit, as well as six reasons why I hated using Mint last month. But I think that'll all change when I put in this credit card and bank information because I'll be using Mint how it actually wants to be used. And if you're just getting into budgeting, I want to make sure that I'm giving you the best information on what apps to use. And if I don't use Mint for all it's worth, I'm probably not giving you the best review. So we're going to do the credit card on my phone and then we're going to do the bank account on the desktop version so I can show you how to add a credit card or a bank account on both and how it might be a little bit different between the two so I'm logging into mint right now as you can see as you can see I don't have any budget categories yet because you can't make the budget ahead of time which I love about mint it's my favorite thing if you can tell but we're gonna go down here so that I can connect accounts right here click that it's a chase credit card and so it's gonna take us over to Chase's sign in. And one of the great things about what you can see here is where it says Chase won't share your username and password with third parties. So that's one of the reasons why I think putting your information into Mint is relatively secure. Obviously, there are potential security threats to anything that you give out your information on, but I haven't really seen any accounts where people have been screwed over by putting their information into Mint. Obviously, I'm not going to show you what our username and password is, but it'll take you to this page here if you haven't signed on on just regular Safari, if it's an iPhone or whatever you use on Android. I'm honestly not quite sure, but it's going to send us an identification code. I got to put that in. Now it takes me to where you're actually gonna decide which cards or which accounts to add into Mint. And honestly, we only use the one Chase credit card because we don't really travel that much and that's really what we only use the other one for. So I'm only gonna select the one. An interesting feature here though is if you think you're gonna be adding accounts or credit cards on whatever financial institution's website you are, you can actually click this include new eligible accounts automatically. So if you open one of those accounts, it'll automatically get transferred to your Mint app. That way if you start spending on it, it'll track your expenses automatically. I'm not gonna click that because we don't have any plans of doing that. And then I'm gonna hit, I agree. And I believe it's gonna take me back to Mint. Please close this window, open up Mint. Now it's connecting to Chase Bank. All right, so apparently it's still not even working. So they're gonna continue working on linking while it's in the background. But after it's done linking, all that spending will go right to the app and you can categorize it based on your budget, which I still have to make for June because today is June 1st that I'm making this video and I couldn't make it before. So now let's get started setting up my bank account because whatever we can't use a credit card or we're gonna get charged extra fees to use credit cards, we just auto draft it out of our bank account. So those are really the only two things that we do transactions out of during most of the months. All right, we're gonna go straight to mint.com. Sign in there. I honestly don't remember this. Okay, now I do, good. <laughs> when you log on to Mint, right in this top black bar here, you're gonna see the Mint logo and then add accounts is the first thing, because that's what it wants you to do. So we're gonna add a bank account. And right now our bank account is with Wells Fargo. We are changing that right now, but that's where we are right now. So I'm gonna go ahead and add that in. It's gonna ask for additional verification, which you want if it's being accessed by a third party. It's gonna send a text message to me. And then we have a couple different accounts, but our joint checking account is the one that we use to do all of our spending out of. All these other accounts are more like savings accounts because we just put money in them for specific purposes. So I'm gonna go ahead and not click this credit card either because we don't use the credit card for spending. Statements and everything will get automatically uploaded. I'm also gonna unclick the newly opened eligible accounts so that those won't automatically get transferred over to Mint if we do open more accounts. I'm gonna go ahead and confirm that information. Say that you read and agree with the terms and conditions because everybody definitely reads those every single time. Now it's connecting to Wells Fargo Bank, which it'll probably take a little bit. Ooh, this one actually worked a lot faster than Chase did. So now when I go to settings, I can look at my accounts and see that I have my Chase account as well as my checking account in here. So anything that I spend out of those accounts now will be put automatically into the transactions tab so that I can categorize it for the budget. Now that's really how Mint wants you to do things. So that's why I'm giving Mint another shot and trying it their way to see if it'll make my life a little bit easier financially. And I'll catch up with you guys in a month to tell you what I think. If you found this tutorial helpful, hit the like button and subscribe down below. It really does a lot to support this channel. And if you're interested in those six reasons why I hated using Mint last month because I didn't have this enabled, check out this video right over here. I'll see you there.